In this specific video, I'm going to show you how to turn long or very ugly long affiliate links into short and pretty links. Now, you may be thinking, why in the world would I want to do this? Well, I mean, think about it. Let's say you go to Google and you find a site and it's very, very long. If you're going to copy and paste that into your WordPress site and somebody clicks on that and maybe it ends up not really working, then you have a problem within your hands. Or if they click on it and it just looks really, really unprofessional, then you want to make sure that it looks professional. So that's what we're going to do today in this specific video. What I want you to do now is simply head on over to WordPress and you're going to look for a specific plugin. So go under plugins, click on add new and do a search for pretty links. Click search plugins and it's the light version, pretty link light. This is the free version. It's basic. And this is really all we need. So click on install now, click OK, enter your FTP username and password, click on proceed, click activate plugin, and there we go. Now I'm going to walk you through the process of using pretty links. So simply click this here, and we can click on add a pretty link. And here we go. This is very, very easy to use. Now, the first thing you'll need to do is to have a URL, either an affiliate URL or a very long URL, or just something that you want to cloak so that you can make it look professional. Let me hop on over to google.com and find a very long link. So let me give you an example here. Let's say we have a site about panda bears. So I'm going to type in panda bear. We're going to click on images and I'm going to pick a panda bear. Okay. So maybe we'll just pick this person. Okay, or not person, but bear. So view original image. I don't recommend that you take an image off somebody's website and put it on to your own website because that would violate copyright laws and this and that. But this is a great example. So I'm going to copy this. And if we enter the target URL here, we can instead internet profits university slash panda panda bear chillin so we got your target url your pretty link your title now your title should be something related to your keyword and then under options we have groups you can add a group in this case we're going to leave it as it is for SEO options, you can have a no follow this link. We're going to leave that blank. Perimeter forwarding. You do not need to check this. This is for advanced users and it says track hits on this link. And that will be great if we can see how many people are going to this specific pretty link. So when we click on create, we have now created a pretty link. So now instead of that really long URL, as you can see here, if we go to yourdomain.com slash panda, it goes straight to this specific site. Now this is great, especially if you're promoting an affiliate product and you have this really, really long URL or you're referring to a site and it has this really, really long URL. Instead of doing that, you can simply cloak it, track the hits, and make it look professional. So that's how to shorten a very long link and keep it on your website. And that's it. In this specific video, I'm going to show you how to use the related post plugin to help visitors find related content. So what you need to do is log into your WordPress dashboard, go under plugins, click on add new and do a search for a specific 
related posts plugin called the contextual related posts click search plugins we're going to go ahead and install that plugin and this is the plugin here so we're going to go through the installation process so click on install now click ok enter your ftp username and password click proceed and click on activate the settings for the related post is going to be under settings related posts and here we go i'm going to walk you step by step through the general options so you can set everything up and then you'll be good to go so under the general options this basically displays the related number of posts so do you want a maximum of five or do you want a maximum of 10 whatever number that you want in this case we're going to leave it at six related posts should be newer than a certain amount of days this is customizable as well you can do it as it is now or you can put 2000 days whatever if you want to make sure that the content is fresh you could do something as 365 days so it's really up to you but I think because if your content is really good and it's not outdated then I would not necessarily put a certain time limit if your posts are related let's say for example to the news and you want to keep everything up to date then you can change that the post types just allow certain post types like posts, pages, and attachments. In this case, I'm going to leave it at post and page. It's really up to you. And you can find related posts based on content as well as the title. Or if you uncheck this, then it'll find related posts only related to the titles in this case I'm going to leave it unchecked simply because the posts on the pages that I'm creating will not have any content for examples you can also list the post or page IDs to exclude from the results and the way you figure out the post or page ID is simply by going to a post say for example posts click on all posts and if you click that specific post or page you're gonna see post equals a certain number that right there is your post page ID you can also exclude categories from the results so in this case simply enter the category name and that's it you can also set it where you can add related posts to posts pages home page feeds category archives and this just gives you the ability to show wherever the posts are gonna appear in this case I'm going to put posts and pages click Save Options and we'll move to the second tab the second tab is the output options basically how it's going to look so you can change the title of the related posts if you want to or leave it as it is when there are no posts you can either put a blank output or display no related posts now while this is an option I would recommend that you put a blank output simply because you don't want people to think oh this person doesn't really have a lot of content or you know who knows what could go in the mind of somebody if they saw no related posts it to me it's kind of like seeing the uh, this site is under construction kind of post so that's just how I see it so it's really up to you whether you have a blank output or displaying a specific message you could have it display a different message if you want it to uh, have that 
You can also show the post excerpt in the list. If you check that, it's going to grab the excerpt and put it in the list. I'm a big believer in keeping it simple. I'm going to leave that unchecked. That way they can just see the titles and click on it if it captures their interest. That way they are not overwhelmed with too much information or too much keywords in that list. You can have the length of the excerpt, but if that's unchecked, that doesn't really matter. You can limit the t post title length if you want to do that. I normally leave it at 100 because I'd like to show the full title, but that's just me. And then this option here basically opens the links in a new window. I'm going to leave it as it is because I want people to stay within my site and not be distracted. You can add a no follow attribute to the links in the list. And you can exclude display related posts on specific posts or pages. So use the same method I showed you earlier. If you want to know the post or page ID, simply click on the post or page and you'll find the ID and enter that here. And this stuff is just for, you know, lists, unordered lists, and things like that. I'm going to leave it as it is. These are post thumbnail options. Basically, you can set it where each of those related posts are going to have like some sort of thumbnail next to every one of those. Now, it depends on your audience and who they are. If they are very, very graphics oriented, that might appeal to them. But for the most case, I'm going to leave it do not display thumbnails. You can customize your thumbnails, the width, the height. You can use Tim Thumb by checking that. You can enter the quality of the thumbnails that way, because if you have too many images, it can actually slow down your site. So you can enter the quality here. And we have the post thumbnail meta field which enables you to customize that within your post. And you got other information about thumbnails. Click save options when you're done. And feed options are basically related to your WordPress feed. So you can customize these feed options if you want to do that, displaying a certain amount. Thumbnails, if you want to use thumbnails. And we're not going to leave that blank. We're going to leave that as it is custom styles. This is for advanced users. If you know how to tweak your CSS cascade styling sheets, in this case, we're going to leave it as is and we're good to go. Now I want to show you the related posts plugin in action. If I go to the site here, I've added a bunch of posts and pages. And if I refresh the page, and let's say, for example, I'm going to click on a specific post. And remember, I have it set where if the title is similar, it's going to show the related post. So I've got three posts, post one, two, and three. And if I click on any of these, it should post and show the post one and two. So we got post one and two. If I go back here, and I click on post two, it should display post one and three, and one and three. So there we go. And if I click on pages, we only have page one and two, it shows page two, and page two should display page one, and we can see that it works. That way, when somebody actually comes to your site, they really are interested in the content, they love it, they wanna know more, they're going to see the related posts and they're probably going to click on that to find out more information. So that's a great way to get people to stick on your site, to interact with your site and decrease your bounce rates and increase the stay rates. This really helps, especially with Google trying to rank your sites and trying to figure out, is your site a site that people actually go to and stay on? In this specific video, I'm going to show you how to effectively use authority sites to increase your search engine optimization. 
Now this video is going to be quick and fast. However, I'm going to show you a powerful method that can help you a lot. So let's go ahead and get started. So basically the way this method works is you set up a WordPress site, you write some content and within that content itself, you basically link to a high authority site. For example, Wikipedia or a bigger site than that. But in this case, we're going to be using Wikipedia. Now when Google comes to your site, basically what they're looking for is good content and is it credible content? Now, if you're linking to an authority site like Wikipedia, a news channel or some sort of science or some sort of credible education, medical or big site, then they're going to put a little more weight on your content. They're going to see your content as, okay, this is good content, but also this content is linking to a credible source. You don't necessarily get a lot of link juice from this, but you get a, a few pluses in Google's mind because you're pointing and referencing credible sources. I mean, if you think about it, when somebody writes a paper and you think about when you had to write papers in high school and college, you always had to reference specific sites whenever you were writing a paper and you read their content and you reference them. So very, very similar idea. So what I want you to do is simply go to google.com. That in this example, we're going to be writing a content piece on how WordPress, you know, is helpful and, and this and that. So we're going to, it's going to talk about WordPress. So what I would prefer to do normally is I would type the keyword in, and then I would type in something like Wikipedia. And then I would go to this link. I'd open it in a brand new window. And then I would put something like, I don't know, news. Mashable is a fairly high authority site. Let's try something like MSN news okay so I didn't really find anything in the news channels that would actually support my case so I'm gonna stick with Wikipedia and Mashable now once you have found at least one credible authority site source it's time to create a post or a page if we go back to our WordPress dashboard and let's say for example we'll go to post click on add new and create a new post. So I went ahead and paused this video and created a post that says how to create a website with WordPress. And in this article, I'm going to show you how to create a web website using WordPress in four easy steps. Step number one, install the site. And step number two, install the theme. Step number three, tweak your theme. And step number four, etc., etc. Now I'm saying according to Wikipedia, WordPress was founded in blah. And what you can do is highlight the WordPress and link it and put a link to that site, the WordPress site that we just got here and click on open link in new window. That way, if somebody clicks on it, they will stay on your site. Click on add link. And we could put another credible source since it says WordPress 3.5 has arrived. And of course I'm putting this here, but you could put this anywhere you want. And I just wanted to show you this as an example where you're basically writing your content, but you're linking to a credible source because a lot of people that take advantage of Google, and Google's looking for people that are taking advantage of them. So if they see that, oh wow, you're, you're, you're linking to a credible source, you must be a legitimate piece of content or a legitimate site. So we could say something like WordPress 3.5 has arrived. And according to Mashable, And you can put a link here and link that link 
here. And that's it. So the whole point of this is to understand that you find credible authority sites like Wikipedia, news sites, news channels, radio places, or, or places with credible authoritative sites and just link to them. And yeah, you might get people to go to that site, but you want, that's obviously why you want to make sure that whatever site that you link to, you know, has information that actually supports whatever your content or article is. And that's it. Of course, click on publish and click on your categories and you're good to go. Hello and welcome to RSS feeds part number one. In this specific video, I'm going to show you how to find your RSS feed location in your WordPress site. Now you're going to see a list of URLs here and let me explain what they mean. If you've installed any other version before version 3.5, then you'll need to basically follow these guidelines. And I'm going to go back to this in just a minute. However, if you have WordPress 3.5 or greater, you'll notice that if you go to yourdomain.com slash feed, you will see the feed automatically here. So this is the feed that we need. However, going back over here, if you're using a WordPress version before that, then pay close attention. Now, if you've installed permalinks, then you want to try these feeds like yourdomain.com slash question mark feed equals RSS or equals RSS2 equals RDF or equals Atom. If you have not installed permalinks just yet, then you might want to take a look at these links. Feel free to pause this at any time so that you can test these out. And it really depends on your WordPress site. Some sites will reveal this, some sites will not. But what I found for the most part is they will either be slash feed, slash feed, slash RSS, or these top two here. I rarely ever see these bottom here, but most likely these top here, these top here. But if it's after version 3.5, then it's just simply slash feed. So try it out and find your RSS feed because in the next video, I am going to show you how to syndicate your RSS feed. Hello and welcome to RSS part number two. In this specific video, I'm going to show you how to syndicate your RSS feed using FeedBurner. FeedBurner is now owned by Google.com, so it's very, very easy to use. All you're going to need is to have a Google account. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first things first, we're going to need to have the feed link because we're going to need this later. This is where my feed is, yourdomain.com slash feed. And if you have not found it yet, you'll need to find that because we're going to syndicate that feed. Now, what you need to do is simply go to Google Feed Burner. So type that in. You can go to google.com if you want to do that. It's at feedburner.google.com. Simply log in using your Google information. And syndicating a feed is actually very, very easy to do. All you need to do is simply enter the feed right here, click on next, give the feed a name. So let's say for example, we're going to call it WordPress training, click on next. And there we go. So now we have a feed and other people can subscribe to your feed. And if we go to the feed, you can see the content. For example, post one, post two, post three. And we've got three posts at our site. And if you basically take this feed here and you can submit it to RSS syndicating 
websites that will syndicate your RS feed and also can help because it can give you more backlinks to your site with RSS feeds. Now, before I show you how to submit your RSS feed to RSS submission sites, let's go through this process. If we click on next here, FeedBurner basically just gives you a ability to get more statistics. So if you can select these, if you want to, click on next, and there we go. Now let's click on analyze. The neat thing about FeedBurner.com is it allows you to track the statistics, as you can see here, simply from this dashboard here. Now we don't see any statistics right now simply because it's new and we haven't actually gotten much traffic to it. If we click on optimize, this basically just gives you the ability to add some more features, make it look nicer and things like that. And publicizing your feed, it basically allows you to get more exposure and more subscribers. Now there are sites out there that allow you to basically take your RSS feed and submit it to them called RSS submission sites. There are many, many out there. One in particular is called feedag.com. F-E-E-D-A-G-E -E or feedage.com. And if you click on submit feed, you can simply enter your username and password and submit your th feed. And from here on out, basically all you need to do is start submitting your feeds to RSS feed submission sites. You can either do it yourself or you can outsource this process. In fact, one of my favorite sites to go to is Fiverr.com. So F-I-V-E-R-R.com. Simply enter RSS submission. Pay somebody five bucks to do it for you. And it says here, okay, click on rating here. And we're basically going to rate the top rated people to, at the top and go from there. So it says here, social bookmarking, RSS feeds. We're looking primarily for something related to RSS submission. I'm going to reword this as submit RSS. Okay, it says, I will add your site to, okay, I don't want to do that. I just want RSS submission. I will submit your RSS feed to over 175 sites and directories. And whoever you submit to, make sure they have good ratings beforehand. I will submit your RSS feed. Okay. I'll do RSS submission of your blog. Submitted to RSS. Okay, so let's look at the these people here. It says, I will submit your RSS feed. Three days, 99%. A 1,000 positive reviews. And just go through, look at the reviews. Make sure that you do your due diligence uh, before you buy from any of these people. And if all looks good, you can purchase and it's it's only five dollars I mean it's either that or you can do it yourself and submit it one by one by one uh, but if you can find somebody who does a manual process I'd rather have 20 high ranking done manually than somebody actually doing it automatically and doing like a thousand so if you ever see anybody who says okay I'll submit your site to a thousand sites. Yeah, they might do that. They might use a piece of software to do that. But I would recommend finding somebody who can do it manually. 
So that's it. Remember, part number one, get your feed. Number two, use feed burner to burn it and get the feed that's basically you can have your subscribers subscribe to. And step number three, submit your RSS feed to as many RSS submission sites that you can to get more exposure. In this specific video, I'm going to show you how to embed Google Analytics into your WordPress site. This is necessary, especially if you want to track your statistics, see where visitors are coming from so that you can improve your site. You're going to need two things. You're going to need to have a Google Analytics account, and then you're going to need to log into your WordPress dashboard. Okay, so I'm at my WordPress dashboard. Now, before I do anything, I need to create a Google Analytics account if I don't have one already. Now, if you don't have one, simply go to google.com and type in Google Analytics. Now, if you have a Gmail account or a Google account or a Google Plus account, it's the same thing. So you can simply sign in to your Google account. Now, I like Google Analytics simply because they provide you with a ton of statistics and you want to make sure that you know, you know, who's coming to your website, where they're coming from, what countries they're coming from and what's working and what's not so that you can improve your marketing. I'm going to go ahead and log in. Now, when you first log in, you're going to see your websites on the left side, your visits, your average session time, and the bounce rate. In order to add a brand new account, simply click on admin. And at the very top, you're going to see right under the accounts tab, new account. So click on this link. And you'll be forwarded to this page where you can enter your information, your website name, your website URL, and so forth. So I'm going to go ahead and enter this information. And make sure that you follow the examples here, the HTTP colon slash slash enter your www.yourdomain.com. And it has to be exactly the same domain for this to work. Click on industry category, enter your time zone, and set up your account. And normally by default, these are both are checked. I'm going to leave them checked. Click on get tracking ID. Accept Google's terms and service. And there we go. So this is our tracking ID and this is what we need. Now they're going to give you a code at the bottom here. You do not necessarily need this unless you are installing this on a non WordPress site because I'm going to show you how to do it the easy way. So make sure that you highlight this copy this because we're going to need it later on. Now, before I move on to the WordPress dashboard, the cool thing about this is you can also track social settings. For example, if you have a YouTube account for your specific website, then you can actually enter this URL here. And it probably would be wise to do this. With that said, let's move on back to our WordPress dashboard here. Go under plugins, click on add new. Okay, so at this point, simply type in Google Analytics, click on search plugins, and you can choose any Google Analytics WordPress plugin that you want. Our whole goal here is simply to insert it so that Google Analytics can begin to track our site. Now, in this example, I'm going to be using a plugin 
called the super simple Google Analytics. So if you want to, you can simply enter this into the search area at the very top. Click on installed now. Click OK. Proceed by entering your FTP username and password. Click activate. And there we go. If we go under settings and click on Google Analytics, this is where we can enter our information. Now this is basically where you're going to enter your information. If I go back here, all I need is this here. Simply copy this here. And remember there is a one at the very end. And we just enter that here. Now these two boxes enable you to track additional data. If you want to track administrator hits, which means if I go and visit the site, it's going to track that as well. In this case, I don't necessarily want to do that. All I want to know is if somebody else has come to my website. So I'm going to leave these two unchecked. This relates to AdSense data. I'm not doing AdSense, so I don't need to do this. Click Save Changes. And there we go. Nothing fancy. If you want to track your statistics, you're going to need to go back to the Google Analytics page over here, find the account, and you're going to view the statistics. You won't actually see the statistics on the WordPress site. That's it.